Ready? Excellent. I, I truly don't know what to do about this hair. It is so... What do you want me to do? Why don't I cut it for you? You I, Cut away. You don't want it. You're afraid. You're afraid. You're afraid. I have to do something about the hair because I have to use so much product to keep this from happening just up like, here. Just be shaggy. Just be yourself. Just be shaggy? Just be yourself. Because right now it's got a very Don Jr. look. I'm not liking it. The deep tan doesn't help either. Go natural. Go na oh, natural? <laughs> okay. Tomorrow, no hairspray, no pants. Welcome to A Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. We're back after a two-week break. Hey, you know what I wish would also come back? Governance. We could really use some right now. Because the coronavirus continues to surge in America, where we're up to 3.3 million cases. And yesterday, Florida shattered the U.S. record for new single-day COVID-19 cases. That, of course, belongs with other Florida records, like highest number of illegal petting zoo fatalities, most nude at Hardee's, and most nude at illegal petting Hardee's. According to the Florida Department of Health, an oxymoron if there ever was one, the state reported 15,299 new COVID-19 cases yesterday. You know what? For safety's sake, let's just throw a condom over the whole state. Despite this surge in cases on Saturday, Walt Disney World officially reopened. That is not safe. Disney only has one dock and he's already busy with Sleepy and Sneezy. Plus, the whole state screwed because their governor's dopey. Now, to Disney's credit, only Magic Kingdom and Disney's Animal Kingdom are open. Epcot wanted to open, but Americans aren't even allowed to visit pretend Europe. So coronavirus cases are skyrocketing, but don't worry, because the White House is working hard on an aggressive new plan to discredit Dr. Anthony Fauci. So, the guy you're undermining during a public health crisis is your top public health expert. That's like discrediting Lassie right when she starts barking. What is it, girl? Did Timmy fall down the well? <coughs> Why should I believe you? The president says you spend all your time licking your own butt. Over the weekend, the administration ramped up their attacks on Fauci because Trump doesn't want to talk about coronavirus. Instead, he wants voters to focus on another issue. No radical left anarchist, agitators, looters, or protesters will not be knocking down or harming the Washington Monument, the Lincoln or Jefferson Memorials, or just about any other federal monument. Oh my God, they're knocking down the monuments. <laughs> Meanwhile, Fauci's out there saying things like this about COVID-19. As a country, when you compare us to other countries, I don't think you can say we're doing great. I mean, we're just not. How dare you, Fauci? What kind of monster would say America's not doing great and needs to be made great again? It's really hard to do that voice after you haven't done it for two weeks. It it's just, it is very painful. Even though Fauci is part of the administration's own task force, the White House is treating him as if he were a warring political rival. And the list of Fauci's statements sent to journalists was laid out in the style of a campaign's opposition research document. You don't like his diagnosis, so you try to destroy his reputation. Makes sense. That's why I took out this ad. Dr. Glenn Eichler. Wrong on my blood pressure? Wrong for America. Paid for by Stephen Colbert's Who Want to Eat More Carbs. The main thrust of their attack is that Americans should be concerned about how often Dr. Fauci has been wrong. Well, if they're worried about Fauci, they should really warn us about this government official who got a few things wrong. We have it totally under control. It's one person coming in from China. You know, in April, supposedly, it dies with the hotter weather. The people are getting better. They're all getting better. When you have 15 people, and the 15 within a couple of days is going to be down to close to zero. You have to be calm. It'll go away. Relative to other countries, we have very few cases. I see the disinfectant, where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or, or almost a cleaning. Oh, there's going to be a cleaning about four months from now. No way this prediction will ever come back to bite me in the ass, slam. 
With coronavirus surging across the nation, parents are wondering how and if schools will be able to reopen in the fall. On the one hand, parents are worried it may not be safe to send kids back. On the other hand, send the kids back. There's only so much Paw Patrol and Peppa Pig an adult human can take. Trump's behind in every national poll, so he is desperate for the schools to reopen. He even tweeted this threat. The Dems think it would be bad for them politically if U.S. schools open before the November election, but it is important for the children and families may cut off funding if not open, must open, need English class, not understand where goes sentence subject of. That is a big threat to schools. Open or lose some of your funding. And to reinforce that message, Trump sent out Secretary of Education and woman just learning she's Secretary of Education, Betsy DeVos. DeVos was on a bunch of the Sunday shows on Sunday and immediately doubled down on Trump's threat. American investment in education is a promise to students and their families. If schools aren't going to reopen and not fulfill that promise, they shouldn't get the funds. That's right. If schools aren't going to reopen and not fulfill that promise, they shouldn't get the funds because nothing says you're a great secretary of education like a sentence with a triple negative. That's like watching the secretary of the Navy go on TV and drown in a kiddie pool. Understandably, there are some concerns about returning to school, such as, you know, the, the dying stuff, which is why Chris Wallace asked about kids spreading the virus. To I've school. been told the science there isn't, isn't so clear, Secretary. How they spread the virus conceivably to their parents, to their grandparents, to teachers in the school, to custodians in the school. Do we know that? Well, that is something that is obviously continuing to be looked at and, and studied. And there is, uh, again, a lot of data that suggests that kids are not spreaders. Interesting. I also have some data to suggest kids are spreaders. I've had kids. My children started school in 1999, and I am almost over the cold I caught that year. Rabid raccoons are less of a disease vector than children. Then DeVos went over to CNN where she was asked about whether or not the Department of Education had a plan for reopening the schools. Her answer was a resounding... Do you have a plan but for, the, for the, what you, students the and plan, what schools should do? So, schools should do what's right on the ground at that time for their students and for their situation. There is no one uniform approach that we can take na or should take nationwide. So the plan is make your own plan. I'd love to see a DeVos family recipe. Betsy's brownies. Step one, find someone who knows how to make brownies. Step two, enjoy those brownies. Step three, endanger children. There was a major shift in COVID policy from the president this weekend when he went to visit patients and staff at Walter Reed Medical Center after months of refusing to wear a mask because he was afraid he'd be made fun of. Brace yourselves, he finally put one on. And I just want to say, ha ha, fell for it, sucker. This was all the long con. We've been wearing them just to get you to look stupid. You've been helped. Trump maintains that he's been a mask man all along. I think when you're in a hospital, you should definitely wear a mask. I'll be wearing a mask. I think uh, hopefully I'll look good in a mask. I've never been against masks. But I do believe they have a, a time and a place. Yes, there is a time and a place. Pandemic and face. Speaking of Trump covering things up over the break, uh, we got some news about former Trump campaign advisor and head the hat came with Roger Stone. Remember Roger Stone? If not, let's catch you up. Previously on Roger Stone. Roger Stone vows that he will never testify against the president and says that he had no contact with WikiLeaks on the Clinton campaign stolen emails. President Trump is praising his former longtime associate Roger Stone over his refusal to testify against him to the special counsel. Roger Stone was arrested to face charges in Robert Mueller's Russia investigation. He's accused of lying to a congressional committee and witness tampering. Now to the verdict tonight involving Roger Stone guilty on all counts. Well, you can't win them all, Batman. And now, tonight's episode of Roger Stone. When last we checked on Roger Stone, it looked like justice had been served. But now justice 
has been sent back to the kitchen because on Friday, Trump commuted Stone's sentence, which is an outrageous abuse of power. And of course he did. Roger Stone was a Trump loyalist for the entire process. And now he's being rewarded with a get out of jail free card, which makes sense given that Stone dresses just like the Monopoly guy. Still, first Michael Flynn, now Roger Stone. Trump is clearly breaking out his cronies for one last heist. It's all in the new caper, Collusions 11. Criticism of the move was swift, even by Republican Senators Pat Toomey and Mitt Romney, who tweeted, unprecedented, historic corruption. An American president commutes the sentence of a person convicted by a jury of lying to shield that very president. Yeah, but that's just one of the perks of being on the Trump train. He promises his people unlimited pardons, one free my pillow, and a lifetime of getting your food spit in at restaurants. Other members of the GOP joined in with this statement. I believe that the president has learned. President has learned. President has learned. She will be missed. But we did get a rare statement from special counsel Robert Mueller. Now that's a name I've not heard in a long time. A long time. I agree with the distinguished senator from Tatooine. You see, in an op-ed published on Saturday, Mueller writes, Russia's actions were a threat to America's democracy. It was critical that they be investigated and understood. Stone was prosecuted and convicted because he committed federal crimes. He remains a convicted felon, and rightly so. Or as that statement was redacted by Bill Barr, America's democracy remains rightly so. Hey, there's huge news in the world of sports. Evie and I worked on a puzzle last night. It's one of those New Yorker cover puzzles. So great. I'm tired. So great. I'm tired. She gets the edges down really fast. Lots of fun. Only a few head injuries. There's also news from the NFL. Because after decades of backlash from anyone with a conscience, the Washington, I don't really want to say its names, have decided to change their team name and logo. Never a great sign when your social wokeness is a month behind a pancake company. Today, the team released a statement saying that they're working to develop a new name and design approach that will enhance the standing of our proud, tradition-rich franchise. A commitment to progress that would have hit a little harder had the statement not used the team's name seven times and included their logo. Wow, they're almost as good at PR as they are at football. I'm told they haven't had a, a good season in a while. The team decided to make the change after looking deeply into their money because the change came only after their sponsor, FedEx, released a statement asking the team to change its name. So get ready for the Washington 12-digit tracking numbers. There's also an ongoing controversy about comments made last week by Goya Food CEO Robert Unanue. Trump invited Unanue to the White House on Thursday to highlight a new advisory commission the president established to create new opportunities for Latinx Americans. Now, given the awful things Trump has said and done to Hispanic people, and Hispanic people make up a significant proportion of Unanue's customer base, you might think that Unanue wouldn't be the biggest fan of the president, but you'd be wrong, because here's what he said. Mr. President, what can I tell you? I'm so blessed to be here in the most prosperous country in the world, the greatest country in the world, and we're so blessed to have you as our leader. Well, it turns out praising a man who repeatedly vilifies the Latinx people did not sit well with Latinx people. Because right after Unanue's comments, calls immediately started online to boycott Goya Foods with hashtag GoyaWay. Fun fact, GoyaWay is what the Moyle yelled at me that one time I attended a bris. I stole this joke about working for tips. Unanue was stunned that aligning himself with President Baby Cage would rub people the wrong way, as he explained the next day on The Fox. Hey, Bob, are you getting a boycott? That's what I've heard, because you had the audacity to show up at the president's invitation and say some positive things about him. You know, Brian, yes. I, and, you know, it's suppression of, of speech. Yes, this boycott is a violation of Unanue's First Amendment rights. It's right there in the Constitution. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or abridging the freedom of speech. And no matter what the bean man says, you must buy beans from the bean man. I'm James Madison, and I love beans. But Unanue is not alone. 
Trump's allies responded to the boycott with their own plan to buy as much Goya as possible and what they dubbed a boycott. Because boycott is what their spouses will demand after eating all those beans. You're not bringing that bean butter into my bed, buddy. Go boycott. <laughs> That's my Audrey Meadows. As part of the movement, one Republican congressional candidate tweeted, just had a cup of coffee and two cans of Goya beans. Take that, libs. Time to start the day. Today's task, save America. Followed immediately by, dear God, my insides feel like a hot air balloon filled with lava. Please kill me. Take that, libs. We've got a great show for you tonight. Take that, libs. CBS Evening News anchor Nora O'Donnell is here, but when we come back, wall fall down, get wet. Take that, libs. Libs. <laughs>